Hey everybody and welcome to another Bloomberg Terminal video. Uh, we're coming back to the Bloomberg Professional uh, service today. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be talking very much about um, functions, but we will be talking about why the Bloomberg Terminal is still relevant and why it still matters in uh, finance circles and, and trading floors, um, research, analysis, and other um, professions and industries. Why is Bloomberg still king? And it boils down to a few different things, uh, some of which we've touched upon in previous videos, um, but we'll sort of touch upon it today as well. Now, um, you've probably already seen that Bloomberg Terminal is not a cheap platform. It's a subscription service. It is quite expensive. It will run you um, easily almost $30,000 per year and that's without the bells and whistles added on um, and by that I mean access to research um, real-time quotes from different exchanges and so forth so the bare-bones version is still very uh, expensive and you know I get a lot of questions from uh, people who are not necessarily in the industry who ask and say you know why would I why would I spend that much on a Bloomberg terminal and uh, the short answer is that you you wouldn't. Um, the Bloomberg terminal is not meant for retail traders. It is not meant for your average investor. It is meant to be used in a professional setting, and that's not elitism. That is just simply um, the fact that Bloomberg is a professional tool. It's akin to you know driving I don't know a coach bus to work every day. I mean it'll get you from point A to B but it is complete overkill I mean when you can be driving to work in a in a um, very reasonable Honda Civic so it's a tool of the trade and that's why uh, Bloomberg can command such a high price for it on an annual basis um, companies are willing to pay for it because it helps their employees do their job and do their job well so the first thing the first point I, I'd like to illustrate is that and you can refer back to my first video on Bloomberg, is the ease of access to uh, information data aggregation and historical data that's built into the Bloomberg platform. Yes, it is true that you can pull a lot of this information from various sources on the web. For example, if I do an FA or financial analysis on Boston Properties, which is the default uh, security I have loaded in here today, uh, you can pull all this information from, say, the SEC website. Uh, you can pull up the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks and, and look and see um, effectively the same information. Now, Bloomberg does make some adjustments. I'll give them that. Um, but you're not going to get necessarily an edge with Bloomberg. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that this is all set up in such a way that it's conveniently accessible to you via these tabs. You don't have to fumble around the SEC website and, you know, um, paste things into a, an Excel, uh, Bloomberg just makes it easy. You know, for example, I can export it into a PDF, Excel, or an XLTP, and, um, and so it's very customizable, and, and that's very convenient, especially for uh, analysts. Um, now, again, let's take a look at, well, I don't know, we'll pull up Fed here, Fed data. This will show us the um, upper bounds and lower bounds of the Fed funds rate, which again you can pull up from the Federal Reserve website you can pull up any of this information from the Fed uh, website um, but it's all here with a very simple command um, let's take a look at one more area eco which is the economic calendar now yes you can pull up this information from various sources on the web but Bloomberg has aggregated all of it and put it all here for you and you didn't really have to do anything it's just on this single page and you can sort it by date and uh, put an, a, a weekly view and if you want some more um, in-depth explanation on this I would refer you to my part one through three of the Bloomberg terminal videos if you go into my account you'll be able to to see those and uh, take a look I go into I wouldn't say great detail, but pretty good detail uh, into these functions. So your average trader um, or your average 
investor is not really going to be needing to, to, to go to all of these pages and quickly. I mean, you know, as a retail trader, you sort of have the luxury, I would say, of being able to go to the SEC website if you're curious about something and, and pulling information there. You're not doing it necessarily for a living. You're not looking at a bunch of different companies at once like an analyst might or a trader might. So I think you understand where I'm going here. Um, I think the next point I want to make is the diversity of functions that are available in the Bloomberg also make it worth the price of admission. And by that I mean there's effectively something for everyone here regardless of your um, your profession. I mean you can be an equity analyst or maybe a credit analyst or a trader or um, a researcher or a fund manager and the list goes on. There's a function here for you. Um, uh, for example, let's say I was an options trader at an options hedge fund, which I used to be. Um, I would go to the Oman function. Obviously, um, I have the Fed funds rate as the loaded security, so it's not going to pull options for it. But if we can look at Tesla's options here, that would work great. And that's um, wonderful that Bloomberg suggested that. So here's the options chains, and you know, and you can set it by. Uh, how many strikes you want to see per expiration. Um, here's a function I used to use a lot, which was the, uh, I believe, option volatility monitor, which I haven't been on uh, in a while. In fact, I forgot the um, function here. see if that's it. No, that's not it. Uh, this is the pricing calculator. Okay, sorry about that. This is the uh, function. It's OVDV. I'm embarrassed to say that I forgot that, but I don't, um, I don't trade options um, very much anymore. Uh, certainly not uh, in a professional capacity, but uh, OVDV was a function I used very frequently where you can see sort of 3D surface um, uh, volatility. Um, so these are the kind of functions here. So there's, there's that if you're an options trader. Um, and if you're sort of, uh, if you work in credit, well, let's look at fixed income search. Um, I'm interested in seeing bonds, let's say, issued by Royal Caribbean. It says that we have 11 matches available based on my search query results. And we can see the various uh, issues that uh, Royal Caribbean has, their associated credit ratings. Again, you could go online and look up these credit ratings, but here they are. And then we can go even go as so far as to look at uh, pricing. So we'll take a look at all Q, which is all quotes for this particular issue. Um, and there you have it. So there's something for everyone. And by the way, um, if you go to the user function, this is the functions for your workflow. Uh, my market player is set to equity trader on the buy side. And it shows me all the relevant uh, different functions that I can use. Now, these are just uh, selection of them. These are not all of them. You can sort them by category, but I just want to make this point by saying that these are the various roles you can choose and it will provide you with relevant functions. So there's something for everyone here and it's not necessarily made for uh, the trader uh, specifically or the equity analyst. It's uh, it's all inclusive and that uh, that makes it very valuable for uh, financial firms. Now, uh, the final thing I wanted to talk about, and the reason why Bloomberg is really so prevalent in uh, finance today, very simply, is IB. And IB uh, stands for Instant Bloomberg. It's the instant messenger that is built into the uh, Bloomberg service. 
an IB is pretty much like every other chat that you might um, use. Um, there's nothing specifically great about it, but the fact of the matter is that everybody is using it. It's sort of like iMessage, where everyone has the blue bubble on their phone. You know they're using iMessage, and so a lot of people want to be a part of that ecosystem because that's where people are, um, specifically when it comes to IB. Um, now you can get in touch with pretty much any trader or contact who's using Bloomberg, which are which is a lot, and get quotes uh, sent directly to your Bloomberg. If I pull up my IB, um, just pulling it up in my window here, and uh, making sure that there's I cleared out my chats because I don't want that to pop up. But this is what IB looks like, and your chats would come up here. You can do chat blasts, and your conversations are here. It's not one-to-one. -one. You can also have group chats. And a lot of people have actually gotten in trouble uh, using group chats in the past uh, at different financial firms for you know writing things that they probably shouldn't have been writing uh, in a forum like this. And an important thing to note is that IB uh, interactions are completely and totally logged, and the compliance departments at your firm will have access to read them. So. Uh, information that is private uh, should not be put in IB. It should be strictly work related and it should be strictly um, professional. And um, you also have access to your messages. I will not be pulling that up here though because I do have uh, messages that um, uh, would not be able to display publicly. Um, not that there's anything bad about them, but there's sort of confidentiality um, precautions that I must take. Uh, I'm sure you understand. And um, so that that makes Bloomberg pretty much the number one reason, in my opinion, why it's still so prevalent. Now, whether or not somebody will come and eat Bloomberg's lunch at some point in time, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look that way. I mean, Bloomberg is still used very widely in finance. Um, but there are other platforms that um, that are you know up and coming. Um, I know there's Money.net, but I haven't heard really great things about them. Uh, Coifin is a new sort of data aggregation platform, but uh, it really doesn't hold a candle to Bloomberg. And that, that seems to be the common issue is that none of these platforms, uh, apart from maybe um, Refinitiv Icon, formerly Thomson Reuters Icon, really come close to what you get in Bloomberg. And again, you have the um, you have the advantage on Bloomberg of having access to what is probably the largest network of um, financial professionals in the world. So that's all I can think of right now. There are undoubtedly other reasons that make Bloomberg um, worth the price of admission, but I think the, the point I really want to drive home is that you don't need it if you're trading from home or even trading on a small scale. Um, but it is helpful uh, in helping you do your job when you're working in a professional capacity. With that said, um, I'd like to take your recommendations down on, on future videos uh, related to the Bloomberg Terminal. So if you have any ideas for me, please um, don't be afraid to share them. I would love to hear them and maybe explore them uh, with you. And uh, until the next video, stay safe and have a happy new year.